After finishing right in the country last year, I think we finished 21st or 22nd or something like that, our goal was to become a top 10, top 15 program. Forget that there was any sunlight left. What would you spend today thinking about? Yourself or the man that's beside you? Or the man that you know you get everything in your heart for? We get one opportunity in life. One chance in life to do whatever you're going to do. To lay your foundation and to make whatever mark you're going to make. Whatever legacy you're going to leave, leave your legacy. And it's found through effort. The effort, nobody can judge that. The effort is between you and you. So that team that think they're ready to see you, they think what they seen on film, they ain't saw what film shows. Because every day is a new day. Every moment is a new moment. So now you got to go out and show them that I'm a different creature. Now! Because I'm picked off. For greatness. We started out when the kids was in third grade, which was two years ago, we started out, we was called the East Side Cardinals. You know, we got the idea of switching the name over. Um, I think we was actually in New Orleans and Robbie seen us, we was called the uh, Tulsa Cardinals. We went to a tournament in New Orleans and Robbie seen us. Robert Meacham is a professional football player, played in the NFL. So far he's been in the NFL for eight years. He got drafted by the New Orleans Saints and he played a year with the San Diego Chargers, now he's back with the New Orleans Saints. With him being a big sports figure and playing in the NFL, we, f we all felt like, you know, the name Meacham Elite would not only attract kids to want to be a part of our program, but also put in his name to let people know what he's doing for the community as well. When I noticed it, that we could be special, I think it was in the third grade. You know, we used to get beat a lot in the third grade, but, you know, we, um, we went to New Orleans and actually we played. We got beaten the Final Four by a team from Florida called Top Rises. And I knew then, like, if we add some more pieces to get some big men, then I knew we could be pretty special. So the next year, we, uh, me and my brother coached fifth grade, and Chad also coached fourth grade football. We seen Chase and Braylon. I've been with Mitchum Elite about two years. This is, well, this is my second season. Chase probably been around the most basketball because I mean, he's been blessed to have a father who's a high school head coach. It's hard, but then it's also easy just because when you have the coach, you have access to a gym. He brings so much to the team because he, so, he knows so much basketball. His IQ is tremendous. He's one of them kids that you know that's going to give his all every time he step on the court. I've been playing with Meacham Elite for uh, two years. Braylon, I don't think he know how good he is or how good he's going to be. But once it, that light clicks on his head, he's going to be dominant and it's going to be scary. Braylon is, uh, you know, he's special. And one thing that Braylon struggles, I don't think he believes in himself. You know, once he gets the confidence, because Braylon can shoot, dribble, rebound. I mean, he does everything that everybody else can do. And I can honestly say we push Braylon in the mud because we know how much potential he has. And Braylon don't like the conditions. So as coaches, we like to push it to bring it out of him to make it easier for him in the game. Dad, it's because you don't want to do it. Maybe you're too tired, you don't want to do it. Uh, Dad. I think, they, I think they yell at me because sometimes in practice I get kind of tired and then I start giving up a little bit. You're not even trying. Like you're not even trying. I can understand if you do it two or three to get hard, but you're not even trying. Because you don't want to do it. Why you stop it? Uh, yeah. 
I try to bring the most out of him because I see the talent that he has. I mean, not only just because of his size, but he can do it all. He can dribble, he can shoot, he can pass the ball. So, I mean, I'm hard on him because I know, you know, if I can get his full potential out of him, I know the sky's the limit. I mean, as we go around the country, and I'm glad that we travel a lot because I want him to get the intensity that he's the best big man in the country. I mean, he has the skill set. But as this coach, I had to bring it out of him. See, man, see ball. Come on, Bray. You got to go demand the basketball. You scored three layups. Ask for it. Ask for it. He, he's, he's hard on himself, and I'm hard on him just like I was when I helped, you know, coach his football team because I know his potential. Huh? Are you mad because you missed a layup? It's okay, son. We're not going to make it every time. Big boys miss layups. All right? You got to stop being so hard on yourself, son. That's what takes you out the game. But once he understands, and I think once he gets older and older and older, things will be a lot, a lot better for Braylon. My brother noticed uh, Parker um, at the beginning of the year, and he said something to me and Chad, but me and Chad didn't really get to watch him play, so we had played Parker again, and he was shooting the ball lights out. Parker is one of the best shooters in the country. I mean, by far, he's the best shooter in the state of Oklahoma, probably fifth and sixth grade, but he's for sure one of the best shooters in the country, and now he's, now he's bringing more dimension to the game with his ball handling. He's not scared to buckle down and play defense, but. I mean, everybody, as soon as we walk in the gym, know Parker can shoot the ball. So now, you know, we passed just being a spot-up shooter. We want him to do it all, and he's getting better at that each tournament. It's funny, because last year at Nationals, I think Parker averaged almost 22, 23 points a game. Uh, the most threes I hit in the game was last year at MAYB Nationals. Uh, I think I hit six threes. I hit six threes in the game after I hit five. He has been playing on organized teams since he was three. Um, he loves the sport more than anything. He's very dedicated to it. He takes lessons, shooting lessons. He goes to camps, any clinic he can be a part of, he's a part of. I first noticed I was going to be good at basketball was when I was about five years old. I started playing in the YMCA, <laughs> and my dad taught me a lot of things, how to, like, he taught me like the real game of basketball, like how to play it. Because before that, I was just running around. I don't even know what I was doing. Now that we go places, people know that's the shooter. <laughs> you look at Parker, and you probably be like, oh, that skinny kid, hey. When you get out there, he probably make every three that he shoot. I mean, and then you can't ask for nothing better than to have a shooter like that on your team. He can shoot it, dribble, rebound, he can play up, he can play guard, he can do whatever. I mean, he's a tough cover because if you get out and guard him, he's going to go right around you. Go, go, come get it, three, come get it, B. Give it to him. Go by, let's blow by, let's go get a layup. Let's go get a layup, good. Let's go get a layup. Hey, press it every time. I've been with Mutual Elite for about one and a half years. And I like, I joined this team because of the competitiveness and how hard they play. So I saw a future on this team. As long as they got seven guarding, I'm coming to you. Okay? First thing on your mind gotta be attack. When you catch right there, you're looking fast. First thing gotta be on your mind is attack because you gotta feel like, first of all, you can shoot the free throw line jumper, right? And then you jump so good to where you can get up and jump and get a layup at all times. But the, what the problem is, as soon as you catch, you're looking fast. First things you should be looking at is, do I got room to put it on the floor and go, all right? Thank you, thank you. Thank you, Preston. He can do that every time. He can do that every time. And one thing about Preston is, you know, he gets a chance to see his brother play big time division one basketball. And a little part of that, I think that motivates Preston because a lot of kids, and I know all our kids on our basketball team, want to play Division One basketball or want to play college basketball, period. And if you have that in the household, I really do think that help you. 
Jordan Brother playing college basketball is pretty inspiring. I get to watch him a lot and go to all of his games, so I get to see what he does, and I pretty much copy what he does. I think he's one of the most athletic players in the country, and I mean that hands down. When I catch this free throw line, first thing I need to do is look to see, A, can I shoot it? B, do I have time to quit one, two dribble, jump up? You jump so well, all you need is two dribbles to lay the ball up. Ethan, you so worried about shooting the ball, you're not even setting your feet. Ethan is very, very important because, one, Ethan doesn't know a five or six button. He stays out of ten. I think I bring hustle and defense. I like to hustle on the court. It's because my dad always tells me that's how you get more playing time. So I feel like that's a good thing I should do for the team. I don't necessarily have to score every play. He gets on the floor. He's a yes sir, no sir guy. He can shoot lights out, his defense, he rebounds. You know, a lot of coaches will say if you have 10 Ethans who just doesn't know nothing but 100% all the time, you can bring, be pretty special. Me and Parker probably are one of the best shooters on our team, and it really spreads the defense out. It's because they can't do help versus us. So, like, we can tear the defense apart. We can pump fake and go, and no one will help. It's because we're the shooters. It helps more of our teammates because they can't help against us. So I think Ethan is starting to rub off a lot of kids because he brings the effort and he knows no matter what, he's going to get a chance. So and then now with the new additions with Ethan, Gunner. I've been playing for Meacham Elite for two and a half months. I've been playing for Punk City Pioneers before this and it wasn't nearly competitive. Funny how it acted because Rod Thompson he had called my brother and said, hey, man, I got a kid that you guys might want to come look at. Coach Darnell invited him to practice. He's been a part of our team ever since. He brings a different aspect to the game, too, because he can pass it great. He can shoot. He's kind of unselfish sometimes, because sometimes we get on to him because he needs to look to shoot the ball. What the hell is that? What is that? What is that? What is that? Gunner, a chest pass, all that, that that's, that's no good. My coach has never got into the game on my old team. Daughter, you have to make all that old, no look and all that. That's no good, man. They don't even know you're passing it to him. Like they were, Ethan had no idea you was passing it to him. So we get a turnover, the ball's out of bounds. When he wide open, all you gotta do is make the chest pass. He gets the ball, we run it, we still in the offense. You doing a no look. I can understand if you're doing a no look, but somebody under the goal. It's the little things. We got all the talent in the world, but it's the will to want to win, the will to how to win. That's all we missing. Go. Don't run with your man. He pass the ball. Spread back. Spread back. Stay in front of him. Stay in front of him. All right, we're going, we're going there now. We're down six points to five minutes left. We're going to have to go there. Got ten. All right, just because you catch the ball out there, if, it's, if you're not set, do not shoot the ball. Yes, sir. If you set, shoot the ball. I don't care if, if you set, I want you to shoot it every time. I just don't want you to force the shot to get it up there, okay? Yes, sir. All right, let's go. Let's go. Let's go, Trojan. I mean, let's go, Jinx. Come on, 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 pick it up, all right, pick it up, we all right, 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 
All right, all right, let's go, let's go. Look what I told you, we catch you, we're going to attack. All right, we catch you, we're going to attack. Look, we're going to go man four, man four. If your man taking it out, you just get right here and make sure they don't throw it deep, all right? softest group in America, man. I promise, everything is soft, everything. We got six seconds left. Did he throw you the ball, and you sitting there waiting on the ball, but instead of attacking the ball again, turn around so we can run. Then don't nobody care. You make, every time I say something to you, you don't nobody care. Like, it's, it's getting old. Everything, all that is getting old. I promise you. Like, there's no way that team to even be playing with us, even in the sixth grade. There's no way. To play down to a team as a coach is like a sign of not wanting to finish or not wanting to take control because to be the best team in the country, it's going to be some games you're supposed to just blow people out. Don't nobody show no emotions. Nobody. You walking around like this in the middle of the game, we down six points with your hand in your jersey. Like now, you don't care. Like it's getting to like it, it, it's it's getting ridiculous. Nobody cares. Nobody. Tyrese, is, and I, I tell him all the time, when he played hard on both sides of the ball, and the transformation he made from last year to this year, I feel like the sky's the limit for him. I mean, going into middle school next year, I mean, hands down, I feel like he's probably the best pure point guard in Tulsa. Tyrese is a competitor. He hates to lose. All he think about is win, 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 win. His skill set is advanced for a fifth grader. I remember one time he was at my football practice. Oh, he was at my football game, and he was in on the computer, and he was watching highlights of Kyrie Irving, trying to see what moves he can do in the game. I can compare my game to any 
anyone in the NBA will be Kyrie Irving. Like the difference between us and the great teams is nobody, we don't have nobody to say. When Ty do something, don't nobody say nothing to Ty. Jamari miss a layup, nobody say nothing. Nobody play with emotion. Don't nobody pay to play. What are you going to give? It's asking you to play your hardest, play with emotions, to give that. Is that too much? Like, honestly, playing hard, is that a crime? We got a bunch of people who nobody cares. And, and the thing is, I, I really want people to know, Teresa, you know, I'm talking to you, Jamari Kim. Nobody's good enough no more where this is around nobody. I, I'm just telling the honest to God truth. Everybody's caught up with everybody. Nobody, we don't have this, and that's one thing I, I like about the team. We don't have the man on our team. We don't have a Bryce Griggs. We don't have a little Boosie. We don't have that. We don't, that's not us. It takes one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven for us to be a good team. We're the best team in Oklahoma. But in order for us to be known nationwide, we got to do the little things that count. Just the little things. Diving on the floor for loose balls. Cut, talking on defense. Just a little thing. Blocking out on offense. Making all our free throws. I was trying to get it out of I was trying to get it out I want to pull up. Head spin. Get it, get flat. I got six jobs. I don't get flat. I don't get Get the ball. Wait, Ty, go through. Go bomb and quit playing. Thank you. You trying to be cute? Just use your speed and go bomb. Jamar, he's fast, quick, could jump. The only thing I have to work on with him is confidence to make him believe that he's the best player in the nation. I mean, to become that, you have to believe that. Catch it. My man ain't here. Scrub, shoot the ball. You really didn't want to shoot it, but he played back, so you forced it up. You back. Two, three. No confidence. All the talent in the world, no confidence. You know what they make? You know what they make up? Nothing. Nothing. No confidence, and all the talent in the world makes up nothing. Two, three. Two, three. Two, three. No confidence, and all the talent in the world equals nothing, man. I stay on top of him and stay hard on him until he get that confidence to where he could play to the full potential I know he has. When Coach Tag get mad at me and he's like yelling at me and telling me use my speed and be confident, I get mad sometimes, but I know he's trying to do it for the better for me and to help me go to be a better basketball player. When you fasten at somebody, what is you trying to cross them over for? Just attack them, go bomb. Use your speed. All right? You see Cam and Ty do it, so it's your turn. I want to I want to hard of shake. For no reason. He has all the skill sets in the world, but he got to believe in himself. So if me being hard on him will make him believe, I'm going to be hard on him. I mean, different kids, you got to treat different. I'm breaking so hard, man. Then you throw the Gatorade over here like you out there really doing something. You always tired. How Jamari started was he was just fast. He really didn't know how to play. And I remember I used to hit, we used to get in, hear from his mom in the stands because Chad used to tell Jamari, do not shoot the ball. He used to yell, and Deidre, his mom used to always, why come my baby can't shoot? You hear Deidre, the twin. And just to see where he started from in third grade, to see where he at now is unbelievable. I could just see, keep seeing him grow and grow and grow. And it, it sometimes it's proud as a coach when you see your kids actually getting better. About two years ago, 
I heard about this tournament in uh, Chad. I called Chad like, man, it's a tournament in New Orleans. That's big time. We got to get down there. It's called the Super 60. So we went down there and actually made it to the Final Four. Well-organized tournament, so we decided we got to go back every, every year. We end up playing golf coast and pool play. They had one of the best kids in the country. They beat us pretty bad. Well, Sunday started bracket play, and we, we did pretty good. We beat the Memphis War Eagles. Then we played the top rises from Florida in the Final Four, and we actually got beat. So from, we made a promise to ourselves that any time, you know, this year in May, Memorial Day weekend, we're going to go to this tournament. Back from New Orleans, about to get it in. We did pretty good. Got first place in the purple bracket. Big time, big time competition. Pro skills from Texas won it all. We got beat by the Florida prospects. Didn't play too good, no excuses. Didn't play very well in uh, pool play. We played a team from Alabama in the purple bracket, the Memphis Tigers in the championship game. Beat them by one point, you know. Coming up next, we got me and my brothers and my, my, my little brother's Hoop Dream Classic, a big tournament for us. Then we fly out to Vegas in July, trying to get the boys ready before it's football season, and we turn into basketball shoes. Hold it, hold it. Hold it, hold, squeeze. Get in the middle. Get back, get back. One, two, two, get up. Get up, get up, put pressure, pressure. Get in front, Andre, get in front, Andre. Let's go, look, here you go, here you go. Pass. Good job, good job. What's up, man? What's on your mind, man? Nothing. Huh? Nothing. Should I start you or what? You ain't telling me nothing. I don't know. <laughs> He said he should start. <laughs> Andre is one of them kids you look at, look at him and be like, yeah, he's a football player. He's real physical. He's one of you can tell Andre, get in the game, I want you to be physical with that kid. And the only thing he's gonna say is yes, sir. And he's gonna go in the game and he's gonna get physical with somebody. Mason is a kid that never, never, ever complains. He's been doing this since the third grade. I mean, third grade he was starting to get a lot of minutes, you know, his minutes started to fade to fade, but he's a kid that never complained. Like this past weekend, Dre got in there and Dre ain't in there, you know, things could have got ugly. He hustles, rebounds, he's physical, he could do a lot of things. This last weekend, we had to put in a lot of effort because most of our big men's and shooting wasn't there. 
So we had to step up. We called on Andre a lot of minutes. Well, for Coach Chad asked me to do, I was trying to do it. And each time we called on him, he got better. And I mean, that's just the work he put in, the work ethic. He come every day to practice, give us his all. You never know how many minutes he go play, but he's the type of kid he go fight through. And I mean, that's something that you look at and try to teach to the other kids is when you called up on, be ready because you never know when it's going to be your turn and your opportunity. I carry on to the next day. I think God will be confident to hit all my shots. Don't miss no layups and play with Elsa. Andre is one of them kids that you really can't get bad at. Because no matter what, you know, Andre's going to give it his best effort. And it seems like Andre's one of them kids who are never going to have a bad day. He's a light in the team. He's always going to be smiling and cracking jokes no matter if he played 20 minutes a game, no matter if he played two minutes a game. Andre, what you been doing over the break? Fighting. You still got the same girlfriend? Of course. She broke up with you. Why'd she break up with you? I got anger problems. <laughs> what was you doing, man? Because she work all you? He's always going to be Andre, and that's what I love him for. Yeah. Yeah. Say it like you mean, family on three. One, two, three. Family. The reason we break down and say family is because and I don't even think the kids understand because they're still at that age, but even to this day right now, everybody I play AAU basketball with, I'm still close with. And I mean, I consider them family because you're in school so many days, then you got the summer. Well, during the summer, you're spending your whole summer with a certain group of guys. The older you get, then after, even after AAU basketball, you'll see one of your brothers you play with, AAU ball, and you, automatically that bond is reconnected. Yeet. Yeet. <laughs> Not only is this a basketball team, but it's a family because we play basketball, but if any of the kids is having problems, need somebody to talk to, or not only can they talk to the coaches, but they can also talk to their brothers. So if, this is a family first deal anyway. I mean, we're not out here just cutting kids or not letting kids play because of this or because of that. I mean, this is a family, so that's why we break down every time saying family. Corner, corner, corner. Hey, let's go, let's go. Pull up, pull up, pull up. Good shot, boy. That's all right. That's okay. That's okay. Get back, get back. Trey, shoot, shoot the ball, shoot the ball. Look at Trey, break. Look at Trey. Attack. Good. Ah. Trey, what's up, man? Down there playing on eight foot goals. <laughs> From Chicago to here, it's harder to adjust for me to my league because they already been playing tournaments. And then when I come down here, I have to adjust. You know, we get Trey every year, at the same time every year, middle of the summer, because he stays in Chicago with his mom. But Trey's the type of kid, you know, he's a competitor. So when some, the day he get here, he's ready to get in the gym and work. I mean, it, one thing we got to with Trey is he he comes in the middle, so sometimes he get here, you know, and he he's not here when everybody else is here, so he's starting late. But you wouldn't be able to tell if you come watch us play because Trey's anytime I call on him, he's ready to play. Every day he come to practice, he work his hardest. So you know, I, I I can't say I hate that he's not here at the beginning of the year because I know he's with his mom. But sometimes I just wish we had him the whole year so he can work with the kids throughout the year. They continue getting better like them. I've been playing for Mitra Malik for three years. I come down to Tulsa from Chicago to see my dad every summer. Trey brings a, a different aspect to the game. He can he can really shoot it. So every time Trey get the ball, you can always hear him say, shoot it. If he miss it or make it, he's going to shoot it. And he, he can shoot it at this young of an age. I just get in the game and start shooting the basketball. Shot. Good. Good. Hey man, we got to start uh, them eight foot man. Uh, them eight foot. Where your daddy at? That's them eight foot goals, man. You down there playing on. One word that I always preach is family, and, and, and the reason why I do that is because I know if you all is on one accord, you could be very special, you know. And I preach family 
I've been preaching it, you know, for a long time. But one thing that hit me hard when I really started preaching was when we lost Bryce's mother. The toughest thing that I've ever dealt with in my life is the passing of my mom. My mom was the biggest part of my basketball life. Now I feel like I have to play for her. My teammates and my coaches really helped me get through a tough time in my life. I feel like she still watches me every game. Trojan, 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 eat this. You got to shoot it. Get back. Gunner, be ready to help. Close out. Help, time. Attack, lay up, lay up. When it comes to Cameron, I, I just want him to be the best that he can be. He plays hard every game. Never really have to get on to him about his effort. With Coach Dwayne being my stepdad, I feel like he coach he he's harder harder on me than he is on the other players because he yells at me more and he pushes me more and he pushes him. We was in Oak Muggy actually trying to qualify for AAU nationals, and the game was actually being recorded where it was on TV. And Cameron had made a couple of had a couple of bad turnovers towards the end of the game. We was winning by a lot of points, but he had a couple of bad turnovers, and I got onto him real bad. And my brother and Chad, Robert Meacham, was actually watching the game from his home computer in New Orleans. He called me after the game and said, "I think you're a little bit too tough on Cameron." And my brother and Chad said the same thing, so I kind of toned it down a little bit, just let him play the game and have fun. But I still like to correct him when he's wrong and tell him good job when he's doing good. Top, top, top. When you catch it, you gotta go. You gotta go and kick. Let's go right here. Right here. Get in there. Perfect. That is perfect. Good ball move. Good ball move. Get back. Get back. The block out to Hold it, hold it, hold it. All, all the way, all the way. Good pass. Good. The biggest challenge in my life right now is staying out of trouble and being able to focus on my game. Good. Go, go. The one thing that brings everything we do, I mean, we wouldn't be able to do it without Darnell, without Dwayne, without the backing that Robbie gives us, but the thing that most important that we have that I see a lot of programs don't have is the support base of the parents. I honestly say that we have the best supporting cast and parents that any team can ask for. It's never a problem with the parents. They always show up and support their kids. And whatever we do, wherever we're at, they're always going to be there, whether it's grandmas, grandpas, friends. Sometimes we have parents coming up to us and telling us, please yell, yell at our kids. And our parents don't give us no trouble, none whatsoever. And when I talk to other coaches, I tell them, you know, the number one thing about our team is our parents. You know, we have no issues with our parents at all. We probably the luckiest group of coaches to have the parents that we have because, I mean, we don't have no complaining going on, no, no bickering or nothing in between parents or none of that. I mean, we have a great supporting cast, and that makes it a lot easier when you don't have a group of parents complaining over here about playing time or a group of parents complaining over here. That even makes it more of a family because one thing that we have that I see a lot of AAU teams go through is problems with parents. I can't name you one problem we had with our parents. Our parents been supportive since day one. And if you ask me, they're too supportive because whatever we decide we're going to do, they're right along. 
So, I mean, without the parents we have, it wouldn't be able to go like it go. Hi, I'm Jana Fredrickson. My son Parker and our family have been a part of Meacham Elite for two years now. And I'm probably just best described as our travel coordinator. Um, I organize our hotels, plane flights. My son is Chase, and uh, this is our second year with the team. And it's just been a wonderful opportunity and experience for us to be a part of this and for him to meet new young men and new kids that he gets to grow up with. When I first joined the team, I didn't know anyone, but and I kind of knew Parker. But he, he, he just played for Big Feet Blue, and I just knew his team was like the best team and this rec league that I was, I'm in with uh, my, my school team. And I remember Andre, the first time, he just came over and said, you want to go play one-on-one? -on -one? And so right now, he's probably my closest friend on the team. I started being friends because nobody really would talk to new people on the team. So what I do, I come over and talk, ask they want to shoot, we'll shoot around, and then that's how we got close and just went on from there. Great when we got our, our ex genius Coach Martin helping us out. He's big time coach. He knows a lot about basketball. I just sit back days like this, sit back and just listen and observe. His knowledge of the game, of course, you can just tell by, you know, all the way his son plays. Well respected around the Oklahoma. Teaches the boys a lot, you know what I mean? Sometimes we got to beg him to come out here because he think he's stepping on our toes, but you just got to know, hey, you ain't stepping on our toes. We, you know, we look up to him. I look up to him, even outside of basketball, as a family man, just the things he do. Gotta be quick. Quick. He cut you off. Uh, my twin brother, Dwayne, who I coach with, you know, we've been living 31 years with each other. You know, I love him to death. We do everything together. I think the longest we've been apart from each other was about a week. So, you know, to go to elementary, play sports together, high school, we went to college together. I was a left tackle. He was a left guard, you know, our senior year. So, now we get to work with kids. Sometimes my schedule can get real, real busy. Like on a Sunday, I work from 7 a.m. to 3 p.m. at the Tulsa Boys Home. Then I go from 3 to 4.30 for my first grade basketball team, which is Oklahoma Finest. And then I leave here and go to a football meeting from 4.30 to 6. And then from 6 to 8.30, I leave and go to my basketball practice, which is Meacham Elite. So at my fifth grade practice, Meacham Elite. It's been a busy day. You know, I think it'd be tough when we do separate and he go to one school and I go to a, a different school. But, you know, that's a special bond that we will always have because we grew up together, born together, and we're 14 minutes apart. So we got a special bond with each other. Towards the end of the season last year, team goal, like I, I told Coach Martin this, I said I have two goals. One was to get ranked in the top 25 in AAU National. And the, another one was to do anything I could to provide to help these kids fly to a big tournament. This Las Vegas tournament is going to be pretty, pretty, pretty good. I, you know, the fact that I like about it is, you know, at 10, 11 years old, I didn't get to fly. You know what I mean? So this is going to be pretty special. You also see a bond. You know, some kids never flew before, some have. You know, and I just can't wait till we get there, relax, and then it's time to play basketball. I'm excited about Smells for Vegas is going to be a lot of competition. Play the ranked number one team in the nation. I don't dominate. I just can't wait to stay in the hotels. Though. New team, the lights, fly on a plane, to hang out with my friends, get raped. I will not get nervous in Las Vegas. We started this whole ordeal was the improvement of each kid. I mean, we didn't just go out and get the best kid in, in every grade, in our grade, you know, the best kid in every position. We started with a core group of kids and we picked up kids along the way, but our main goal is to improve each and every one of the kids.